This playthrough is rated E for everyone. I always wanted to deal with a haunted house before the end of the world. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Monowa here with the finale of Illusion of Gaia. In the last episode, we did feed the Mummy Queen, went to the Tower of Babel, climbed up it, fought, fought all the enemies once again, and now we're about to reach the end. But before that, Jim the Jeweler gave us his eternal reward as he teleported us to this really creepy mansion. We gotta figure it out before we save the world. So let's go in it. What the? Wait, these guys are from the mines, aren't they? Huh. Yeah, these guys are basically powered up characters from the diamond mines from before. These are lizardmen, they got 20 HP, and they basically do the same thing as their- Oh! Whoop, okay. Yeah, these are blue-headed uh, floating eyeballs, they got 20 HP. But yeah, they're they're basically upgraded versions of their counterparts from the mine. Uh, they can do quite a bit of damage. I'll try to not take as much damage as I can, hopefully. Just because- mainly because there's no dark space in here, so you can't heal. And we actually have to deal with a boss encounter at the end of this place. So, so hopefully I won't take too much damage. So, And actually, if you're if you're smart enough with the boss, you can actually beat him in a, um, without getting hit. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Actually, getting, doing the boss without no damage is actually pretty easy, actually. We'll see what happens, though. Uh, this dungeon? Yeah, I, that's fine. I wasn't trying to do a new heaven run with the dungeon itself. Just the boss, if I can help it. Um, but yeah, these guys hit pretty hard. They do like two, two ticks of damage every time, so that'd be five, I think? No. Uh, no, that's why you want to see. It's like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, no, ten, so. Now we have 40 HP, so it's two HP per... So they do four damage every time they hit you. So, but anyway. So that can be kind of dangerous, so. Oh yeah, make sure. Ah, that's, oh well. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to see if I can do a no-hit run on the boss. I mean, I can do a no-hit run on the boss. It's just one of those things where as long as I'm paying attention, I should be fine. But, uh, oh yeah, this dungeon gives you no stat increases at all, so don't even worry about it. Yeah, this dungeon's meant to be a little just small, like, kind of weird reward dungeon for finding all the red gems. And you get a nice little, uh, like, Easter egg reference, um, as well as some other, like, little details for for finding all the gems. But yeah, not necessarily, if you just want to beat the game, then getting all the, then getting the 30, I think it was the 30 gems, that's good enough to get all the real rewards for this place. But uh, I actually like this dungeon, despite it being a pretty short encounter. I like it for what it is. I mean, I could probably go to the other side and hit this guy, but I want to. I want to fight him now. But yeah, I like the. I like the theme of this dungeon. The mode seven ghosts in the background, going, "Oh, why'd you collect those gems, you fool?" I'm like, I'm not a fool. I'm a. I'm a completionist, sort of, in a way. Well, not really. I don't do all the achievements and stuff like that in games. I only play it until I feel like I've gotten what I can out of it. But I never 100% games. Not really. If I 100% them, I would do, like, everything. Else. But anyway. Uh, and yeah, because there's no dark space, we need to find out how to heal. How are we going to heal in there? Well, hopefully you didn't use up all your herbs. But if you did, you did use up all your herbs, we get the final herb of the game right here. Yeah. So that's all 12 herbs, too. So. But anyway, let's... Uh, yeah, you have to psycho slide through this one. Eh, don't hit me with that lightning. Or la laser. Oh, la I don't know, I said lightning. Don't hit me with the laser beam. Man, that's ugly. Oh, yeah, these are the green, green worms. They have 30 HP, so they have more HP than the uh, other characters in this place. Well, that was weird. Gotta make sure to, uh... Okay. And we should have two more enemies. Yeah, there's only like 38 enemies in this dungeon, so... I kinda hope I can... I can actually... Oops. I hope I can defeat them. Oh, by the way, you have to do this as well. You can't change the free nano shadow here, so... Alright, who's... Who's the boss of this place? What... Who is truly Jim? And what's this whole thing with the with the labor slave trade? We're gonna find out actually. 
All right, who is this guy? Wait a minute, this guy seems very familiar. Welcome to my home. The jeweler gem is a temporary form. The true form is called Solid Arm. My guy's name is Solid Arm anyway. But anyway, yeah, this is Solid Arm from Soul Blazer. Yeah, nice Easter egg to that game. Long ago, the blazer came down from the sky, and I was put to sleep for a long, long time. My power is contained in red jewels scattered around the world. I've tried many things to bring about my own resurrection. It is I who manipulated the labor trade. I tried to use enforced labor to find them, but it didn't restore my power fast enough. I'm sorry, but I'll have to defeat you too. So, <coughs> so you thought the whole labor trade was basically because it was based off the real world and real humans do that crap type of stuff? Nope. It was solid arm this whole time that made humans do this stuff. So you're the one who created all this evil in the world. Well, I'm going to beat you with the power of cheesiness for boss time against solid arm himself. So all you have to do is hit him once, block his attacks, and keep doing that. Just move up a little bit, not too much. And just keep doing this over and over and over again. Now what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to move between the different conveyor belts so he won't keep hitting you with, with his uh, fireballs. However, we can block in this game unlike Soul Blazer, which you couldn't do that. So you had to like run around or get him from the side or something like that. So yeah, all you have to do is keep hitting him like this. And we should be able to get him without taking a, a single point of damage. Now don't try, to, don't try to double hit him because otherwise you'll get hit by the fireballs. So... Yeah, it takes multiple hits, but uh, after so many hits, as soon as we get them, so we only do one HP of damage every time, so, and that's it. Yeah, that's, yeah, flawless victory. <laughs> Excuse me. Whoa, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. I'm just so excited, viewers. A quiet voice is heard. I was defeated again. Blazer was strong, but you are stronger. I don't know, I... It didn't as Blazer we finished him off in like a couple seconds? Like it was pretty quick. But anyway. Danger approaches this planet. You should hurry to the Tower of Babel. Then why were you trying to kill me then? Okay, whatever. Yeah, all that dungeon was all the dungeon was was supposed to be a bonus dungeon just to have for fun and a reference to Soul Blazer. But I like it. I thought it was a fun uh, simple little dungeon. You know, just, uh, just to tie in the previous games. Didn't have to do that. Yeah, this is the final dungeon, or final boss. So make your saves, and with the power of Firebird, we'll be able to defeat our final boss. You'll will, you'll not, you'll not be surprised what the final boss is. Well, if you played these series before, you know what the final boss is. But leading up to the final boss is quite a surprise. Come on, Kara. Wait, who's this? One worn-out body is quietly laid down. In his head, a familiar voice speaks. Well, it's me, Omen, your father. My body has decayed, but I live on like this. As a skeleton? I thought you lived on as a flute in my, in, in my pocket or whatever. Yeah, 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 he died, unfortunately, so. Father, why are you in that form? There's a strange room in the Tower of Babel, filled with the light of the comet. Time goes so fast there that people evolve very quickly. Why are Kara and I able to live? Because you two are evolved humans. What, new types? I thought there was only a Gundam. Us? Long ago, there existed biological technology using the light of the comet. People freely used the power to make planets and animals. For example, they made the camel. It could go for long periods without food or water, which is true. When people realized the power could be used as a weapon, demons were developed. The world was on the brink of ruin. At that time, the nights of darkness and night were developed to decide the fate of humanity. Usually the nights of darkness are usually evil, but in this game they're kind of, they're kind of a more of a yin-yang type of situation. They are your ancestors. The six mystic statues were made by the knights of me. No, wait, different six. The last mystic statue is entrusted to you. All right, we get the final MacGuffin. All right, cough it over, Dad. Let's do this. Anytime now. Yep, the six MacGuffins are ours. Actually, I guess they have a use technically, so they're not MacGuffins. Because MacGuffins usually entail a thing that never actually gets utilized in the story. It's just a thing to strive for. Soon the comet will be very close. By then, the two of you must go to the roof of the tower. Close your eyes. Now reach into this bowl. It's a bowl of eyeballs. 
Did anyone else do that at, at uh, Halloween parties? No? Okay. The ancestors worshipped the comet as a spirit. Those who bathed in the comet's light were given a strange power. The comet is called a spirit, but it's an unwelcome spirit. Evolving too fast brings destruction. As long as people have evil hearts, demons will be born. Will, open your eyes and look around. Oh, other spirits from that game. Alright. Do you have anything to say, Car? Nope. Okay, who's this person? I can't, even I can't see the real world. I can't touch it. No matter how difficult it may get, I can't help you. This is what, Neil's mom, huh? We didn't really get to know you, so, but okay if you're here to tell me, so who's this? Hey, I'm Lynn. All right. At least you're living. At least you're resting in peace, I guess. Of course, there's no difference between human animals. Uh, except there is. But okay, whatever. I think he means by being living beings. I think. But anyway. With my, with my body gone, I became forever young. From the comet's light, I gained immortality. But is there meaning in eternal life? I felt more alive when I had a terminal disease. Who's this guy? That's the weird thing is all these other characters are I have a name. But this is some generic spirit. Whatever. Hey, Will, it's been a long time. Seth, wait, you died? I thought you were a fish. Uh, okay. Such a world. If I could talk at this end of the academy, I'd be a great scholar. So that's what happened to Seth. That's Seth's story. Is that basically he was a friend of ours that get eaten by a fish, turned into a fish, and then he died and became a spirit here. That's kind of sad, actually. Is this supposed to... This game is weird. Like, just in general. Like, it, it seems like it's a mishmash of ideas that try to make a coherent story. And sometimes it's just all bartered up. I don't know. I guess I don't need everything explained to me. It just seems kind of jumbled. Ah, whatever. Sorry, Seth, that this is what your role was. To become a spirit at the end, so. Neil, what are you doing? I want him to make the Rollet Company grow bigger and bigger. That's all you care about, Dad, huh? Or Rollet. Why is Neil's dad here? He doesn't even have any ties to us, specifically, like... I don't know. Like, why not the Russian glass guy? Why wasn't he here? Or, uh, I'm trying to think of other characters that died over the course of the journey uh, that were, like, at least important to Will specifically. Like, Seth would have been important. Um, and, uh, and, uh, uh, Hamlet, obviously. Well, he wasn't super important to us, but he was, he directly was responsible. Like, where, where's our mom? I mean, I know our mom was in a, uh, let's see. Dad was the flute, and Mom was the pig. Never mind. She, her spirit got released, but shouldn't she have been here? Uh, and then, I don't know. I feel like they could have done a better job with the spirits. Maybe they could have... I, I feel like this game got rushed at the very end. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. At last, the time is near. Everyone, give Will your power. And with your power combined, I am Captain Planet! Or I get a new ability. When Will and Kara joined and became one with the Light Knight, a great power was born. The knights were brought forth. The Dark Knight's ultimate power. The Firebird was released. Yeah, that's the final power that Blazer gets. I think they call it the Phoenix in that game, but it's basically supposed to be the same ability. Alright, with the power of the Mystic Statues and all those spirits, we now turn into Shadow and fight our final, final, uh, the final thing to beat this, which is... Your battle will change the fate of humanity. Now you must go to the Comet. Yeah, we're gonna fight a Comet! I mean, in Fallen, Fan in Fallen Fantasy games, we fought, like, uh, trees, angels, uh, demons. I'm trying to think of the other enemies we fight. Witches. But I don't think we've ever fought a comet. A, a mass of massive body that goes across the universe. A giant ice ball. Uh, you know, we're fighting that. Like, that's cool. The only other crazy thing would be fighting, like, a flying castle or a planet. Oh, wait, the game's done that before. But anyway, I'm going to fight a comet for boss time against the comet itself. It's got 20 HP. It does one thing. It spits out a light attack here, and it just, they just fall down. So pretty easy, so as long as you're paying attention. Oh, yeah, the Firebird is a range attack similar to the previous game. So you just have to kind of just make sure to move back and forth. I wouldn't stay in one spot. Yeah, that's all the comet does. There's actually a two-parter to this guy, so... We'll see if we can do this a no-hit run the first time or not. The comet should be easy. It's the second form that I might get hit at. I'm not saying I won't get hit here specifically, but the second form, I sh second form is actually pretty easy. But but still, uh. okay. Yeah, only a couple more hits. Yeah, one more hit, and that'll be it for the comet. Huh? <laughs> Some final boss. No, that comet was easy! But, nope, he's not the true final boss. The final boss is... Dark Gaia! 
Yeah, this is the final boss, Gaia himself, or Dark Gaia, but we can block his attacks. So. Ah, nuts. I was hoping to do this without any hits. Yeah, these balls will just kind of bounce you all over the place. And you can block his attacks, too. This boss is really easy. All you have to do is wait till he lifts his head and then uh, hit him a couple times and then run away. That's it. This guy's easier than the uh, final boss of Soul Blazer. With Soul Blazer, I had to figure out exact location, where to stand to make sure I not, not get hit at all. Uh, and yeah, I'm just running out of the circle to not take any damage. So we probably... Yeah, and you can block his projectiles, which is different from Soul Blazer because Blazer couldn't block attacks. I guess since I've already been hit, I guess I can just just take the take the damage where he lifts his head. You know? Yeah, just have to wait till. Uh... Oh, that's how I got hit. Ah, oh, come on, man. Fine. Well, usually can, it's really hard to get hit by these these water balls or whatever. Yeah, just kind of have to just wait for him to. to... Yeah, I was hoping I wouldn't get hit all so I could do a flawless victory. Oh well. There we go. Yeah. Oh well, not a big deal. I don't know if it's worth really doing a no-hit run on this game because mainly because it's not there's not much to this fight. Like I said, just hit the hit the hit the I, uh, hit the water balls and uh, just move slightly out of the way, and that's it. Kind of boring, actually, of a final boss, to tell you the truth, actually. Yeah, see, that's all you have to do. I just made a slight mistake, but whatever. Maybe I'll show off a no-hit run. I, I, I've done it with every other boss, so might as well do it with, with Gaia, too. Yeah, there's really not much to this. I mean, there's not really much else I can talk about, really. It's just, like, just... Yeah, this is supposed to be Dark Gaia. Kind of like, uh, kind of like in the original Soul Blazer game, where it was supposed to be you were basically fighting the devil. Although technically in Soul Blazer, he was actually supposed to be called Dark Gaia. It's just in the uh, English translation, they uh, uh, they just called him, um, you know, Death Death Toll or Death Nil or whatever. Yeah, it was Death Toll, wasn't it? Yeah, Death Toll. I was trying to remember it. Yep, and that's it. Dark Gaia is defeated. Yeah, kind of an easy final boss. The final boss of Soul Blazer was harder because I actually had to figure out like where to stand and all this other stuff off screen. Just... All right, here we are finally doing the final battle and we're not going to get hit this time. We're going to do post commentary even though this fight isn't that hard, but I thought it'd be easier to do it this time. Too bad the comment is pretty easy. You can actually use the aura ability. I was actually wasn't using this during the fight at all, but that would have made things maybe a little bit easier on not getting hit because you just attack the guy and then you and then you use aura and boom, there you go. But yeah, not much the comment spits stuff out, avoid it. I'm trying to think of all the enemies or bosses that like you fight like big things at the end of RPGs. I know in Dragon Quest you usually fight some type of demon, so there's nothing crazy there. Uh, I'm trying to think of Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy you fought uh, Chaos, which is basically the devil almost really when you think about it. Uh, crazy Emperor, a cloud, uh, a crazy lunar man that went insane, uh, a tree, a crazy clown, a actually isn't uh, Jehovah's technically an alien, isn't it? So, yeah, okay. Uh, alien, but the white-haired guy was a version of the alien. Uh, eight was a crazy witch. Nine was a... Just basically another... Uh, just another co uh, version of the char main character. Well, he was a... I forgot. I, I remember Nine. He was an evil character. He was cloning, like, other races of creatures to take over this one world because of what... Um, I forgot the guy he was trying to... It's been forever since I played Nine. But anyway, we're fighting Dark Gaia now. So this one... It's basically just, uh, when I was playing it originally, I just wasn't really paying attention. But yeah, if you just stay in one spot, block the bullets for your telekinesis, just hit the water, and then when the head comes back, do like three or five, three to five firebird attacks, and you'll be able to, uh, and then just move away, and you'll be good. You won't take any damage. So yeah, this guy's a lot easier than, than the... Um, Soul Blazer boss, because that that one I had to, I had to like move in weird spots, and I had to put tape on my mo uh, on my uh, TV to uh, figure out where to stand, stuff like that, so I could actually figure out where to like 
Uh, well, I guess it's a monitor too. I, I use my TV as a, a monitor as a TV, so because of all the plugins. But anyway, yeah, pretty easy boss. But yeah, I was trying to think. Uh, Final Fantasy. Tw I don't know what 11's final boss was because that was an MMO. 12. That was more realistic. You fought an actual dude. Uh, 13. What did you fight in 13? I that I've just drawn that game in my head, but uh, I think we almost got. I think we got one more round, and we'll got dark, uh, dark guy here. So yeah, the antithesis of guy himself. Too bad guy is not here to talk to you about why. And why do we? Why do we have access to Gaia? I know it's supposed to be a reference to God and the devil, kind of a way. But anyway, that's it. So all right, back to the back to our regular scheduled game. What happened? to the comet dot 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 question mark that glowing green planet the comet's power has disappeared the evil star has flown off to the other side of the universe Will, do you know what planet that is going there in the dis darkness? It's Earth. Our Earth? That's right. Our Earth. Doesn't it look like a desert oasis? Wasn't the plant mainly like 70% water though? Well, it is salt water though, but I've never, it never seems so beautiful. But it looks lonely shining in the darkness, or dark. Yeah, when you see the plant, like if you're an astronaut and you see the planet, it kind of gives you a different perspective on things. Yes, the world is awakened. Hey, is that our mom? All right, mom. <clears throat> Mother? Earth, a mother with millions of children. I'm sure you think about us sometimes. And Kara often thinks about her parents. I don't know, wasn't her dad or Jericho? And yeah, we never know about what Kara's mom. Earth is the same way. She gets lonely if her children forget about her. Hug your mom, viewers. How is it, you two? Looking at the world you live in from the outside? I guess this game has little money, huh? It's as if we'd become spirits. I want to show all of our group. Well, except Seth is kind of, you know. No. I want to show everyone in the world. Why are you going to do that? Someday people will build ships to travel the universe. We still haven't technically done that. I mean, we could travel to the moon and Mars, but... Then they will see this green Earth with their own eyes. See how lonely the Earth looks just like the two of you. Look carefully at your map of the world. Oh boy, what's gonna happen now? Ah, the map has started to change. Okay, is that a magical map? I didn't think that's how maps worked. Okay. Multiple different continents, whatever. Wait, hmm, something looks familiar. Uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. Oh, it's coming together. I feel it. 
I feel kind of yeah it's the earth yeah America South America you know Africa Europe Australia ew and Greenland gross no somehow the land has taken on a strange shape nah it's just the world we live in today that's the new world new world path of evolution changed by the comet has continued till now. The Earth, too, has a life. It, too, has evolved and changed its shape. Now that the comet has no influence on the world, it's returned to its original condition. So the whole comet was the one making the world so out of place, like we could go anchor Watt next to like, you know, Africa or whatever. So yeah, that's why the geology is like all weird, or geography is all weird in this game. Why do you two know the future? Magic. Pretty much. Nah. Uh, when I lost my body, I started seeing everything. So you were, never mind, I was gonna say that now, but. <laughs> the past, the future, and the present as well. Oh wait, that's a different. Humanity's progress. Maybe people would call this kind of body a spirit. You and Kara can become ordinary children again. Oh yeah, because we were at Evolved Humans or some of that to help deal with this common situation because of the light and darkness nights, basically. Don't be afraid. I don't think I'm afraid. But I don't know what Will's thing is. He, he, he talks in the third person. When we return to Earth, will we be separated? Hmm, huh, yeah. Yes. The world is changing. Humanity and history have started down a new path. So I'll return back to normal, I guess. You two thought nothing of it when you met each other in South Cape. Yeah, that was so long ago, man. When you think about it. actually, this game isn't that long, so that was only like maybe like seven hours ago or something like that. But still. But when the Earth needed the light and dark nights, you met again unexpectedly. That's kind of where the car is like one of the, I guess she's one of the light nights and we're the dark night because we're going to turn to free dance, something like that. Let's look at the world before the power of the comet is extinguished. Hmm. Poor comet, it just did what it was trying to do. We hope you two have a bright future. Yeah, now that we don't have to save the world anymore. How can you turn to normal world, uh, normal life after saving the world from a comet? I don't know, man. It'd be hard for me to do that. Like, you've done the pinnacle of things. Well, come here. Show me your face. Give me some sugar, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to say. I want to burn you into my memory. Your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your hair, your voice, the warmth of your hand. Ah, she's being romantic. And here I am doing the Valley Girl voice for her. Don't worry. I will search you out. At least Will has more of a personality than Blazer did, at least. No matter how long it takes. Hundreds of years. Thousands of years. I will come to you. Now this is teenage love for you, I guess. So take care. Close your eyes.
Let's go. To Earth! Da, da, da. Transfer back into shadow again one last time. I kind of wish the final boss rush you could change to like free Dan or something like that and use him for the for some bosses and then have Shadow be the final form. But yeah, free Dan kind of gets a kind of gets abandoned as a form in the final dungeon. So yeah, during the boss rush. Oh well. What the? All of a sudden it became the 20th century. All of a sudden. Yeah, now it's now it's that vision that uh, that you see as uh, as Will in the Anchor Water, whatever. The Earth's look had changed, but glowing in the sky was as beautiful as ever. So yeah, basically the modern world now. So modern Japan, of course, because this was made by a Japanese company. But still, buildings replaced the forests, rivers became roads, but the villages held only small smiling faces have you ever actually lived in a big town before i don't know like new york most of those found phrase faces are frowning dude but earth was the only one that looked sad now yeah i guess so because we're just kind of chopping down all our trees and everything like that just building more building tomorrow morning car and i will start our new lives Ooh, what new lives is that do they get whole new lives? Do they start from the baby up, or do they just get redone as their current ages? Tower of Babel still stands as if it knows the whole future of Earth. Is it a communications tower? Because that was the whole point of the Tower of Babel, was to make a tower that could, you know, reach the, reach the heavens as well as be communicative to all, all races. That's how they built the Tower of Babel. It's all, all of Earth working together, figuring out and then when the tower got built and they tried to touch God, and God's like, no. And he smacked the tower and then made it, everyone learn different languages. So, you yeah. know. So that'd be funny if it was a communications tower. But anyway, let's watch the credits roll. Oh, man. What a journey it was. The Illusion of Gaia. Thank you, Quintet, for making a fantastically odd game. You, they always do that with their games, whether it be, uh, whether it be Blazer, Terra Enigma. There's uh, Lance. Uh, um... Uh, Act Razor. I just like their games overall just because they're just different. They have a theme of like about either life or the spirit or or uh, uh, growth or, you know, they just usually have themes about, usually about kind of environmental messages. But yeah, there's Seth, Eric, Lance, and Will when they start out their journey. Um, I, I, I still wish there was a bit more of the NPCs. I know you can only do so much on the Super Nintendo, but I felt like there could have been more, like maybe each of them had a major moment or something like that, but Maybe they're trying to be realistic with the story. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, Edward's, Edward Castle. But yeah, the uh, overall, I find the story weird but entertaining. Um, I really love the music in this game. The music is fantastic. Uh, the game actually has character growth. Well, for the characters that matter anyway. Will kind of starts out as just a bright-eyed young adventurer who just wants to explore the world like his dad and find his dad. Kara starts up as a spoiled princess and then she becomes down to earth, especially when she almost starves in a boat. So I was surprised to see that in the game. And this game was surprisingly dark as a kid. You know, it talks about slavery, labor, issues like that. We burned a guy alive. Uh, you know, uh, thoughts about, you know, uh, like the Russian glass guy who, you know, through honor, decided to finish himself off, if you know what I mean. Uh, there's Lily. Yeah, we don't even get to talk to Lily and Lance. Like, we don't get to converse with our friends one more time before we fight the comet. But, uh... Yeah, I liked Lily. I wish she was with us longer. So, but uh, but I understand why Will, Will and Car Car got together because she does get a lot of character growth over the course of the game. You know, um, you know, you start off hating her and then you actually kind of like her because she eventually stops being you know selfish and uh, and all that. Like she wasn't the worst person when she meets us, but yeah, you know. yeah. There they go leaving. They actually gave her a run animation for the end there. Um, I don't know. The gameplay was also very solid. You know, playing as the different characters, having different abilities. Although Free Dan, unfortunately, kind of gets kind of gets overshadowed by Shadow when he comes about. Or you almost want to play Will because of all of his tricks. The only reason you play as Free Dan because he had the longer range and that Dark Friar could do a decent amount of damage. I yeah, I kind of wish Free Dan was useful in the final dungeon. Like maybe it forced you to change to different characters to fight some of the bosses just to change it up. But overall, you just played as Shadow the whole time. 
So, I don't know. But I, I like the game mechanics. Okay? Simple action, action adventure stuff. Oh, thanks for translating the game, guys. Overall, I think they did a pretty decent job. There was a couple of proofread weird, weirdness in the game, but overall, I mean, they did have to, uh, they did have to do some censoring, you know, because, uh, like at the beginning of the game, you're in a church, uh, but in that, in that, they say it was a school or something like that, stuff like that, but it wasn't too badly censored. I mean, yeah, they did the best they could to go give you the themes of the game without, without butchering it. I think I still understood what they were going for without them straight up saying it. Yeah, and yeah, thanks Quintet for making a bunch of series of interesting games. Too bad you are, you guys are now defunct. Actually, but you've been defunct for a long time, unfortunately, which is sad. But uh, yeah, I, I like the gameplay, simple action beats, you know, uh, you earn different abilities over the course of the game. I kind of wish there was a dungeon that really utilized all your abilities. I guess that was the pyramid technically, but even then didn't really utilize all your abilities by the end. And yeah, there's the fishing part where we almost starved on the boat. Yeah, the fact we, yeah, the main character almost starves. Uh, just on on seawater. Actually, how did they survive? Because they were on the they were in the ocean, right? Which was seawater. They don't even talk about how they survived from lack of water. Maybe they just didn't drink water and they were parched by the time they were rescued, or maybe they I don't know. Because I don't think they were smart enough to uh, uh, boil water uh, because they weren't able to, right? Oh, details, details, not a big deal. But yeah, we get an overall sense of like the, the story of how they get to this point, so. Yeah, out of the three games in the series, actually, technically Terra Enigma, uh, well, the, out of the three quintet series of games, the trilogy, Terra Enigma is clearly the overarching best game, when you really think about it. But the thing is, as a kid, we didn't get Terra Enigma in America, so we only got Blazer and Terra and Illusion of Guy. And Illusion of Guy is my favorite just because of just all the, the early memories of the game in itself, like getting the t-shirt when I bought the game by filling out the card or whatever. Uh, just the the just the memories basically overall was quite enjoyable. So this one holds a special place in my heart more than Soul Blazer because Soul Blazer I just I think I rented at Blockbuster or something like that with uh, Terra with Uzun Guy I actually had enough money to actually buy the thing, uh, which is, was very rare for me as a kid. We didn't have a lot of money in my household, so and this I think is the box that or maybe I read in Nintendo Power is one of the two things that really got me interested and wanted to buy the game just because of what I read about it. And I thought it was a worth worthwhile purchase for sure. Obviously, this has been recording this game has been uh, having a lot of memories for me down the line, just of the youth. And because when this game came out, I was only I was only ten when this game came out. I think, or no, no I was eleven, wasn't I? The the ages of youth before I hit teenager, done where your your life changes when you become a teenager. But you know, it's one of those games that because it was made for teenagers and young and young kids, that kind of hit with me. You know, kind of growing, learning a little bit about the world in the own weird way. Uh, you know, learning that things are not as always as simple as they are. As a kid, I probably didn't understand all the stuff that was going on in the background, even though I read the text. But when you're older, you kind of get, oh yeah, we never even get, we know that the, our granddad and grandma are okay because they sent us a letter, but we never get to see them again. Uh, there's the king and queen. Oh yeah, I guess the queen was still alive. Never mind. But she just hardly ever talked. Oh yeah, we never get to find out what happened to him, really. Uh, and then that guy, that was the guy from the Moon Village, right? Yeah, there's the vampires. Oh yeah, I guess they got to rest in peace after the comet got destroyed or whatever. Okay. Uh, oh, there's, a uh, Ishtar. I guess he's fine now. Oh yeah, why didn't he come back as a spirit? Uh, yeah, Russian glass guy, why didn't he use spirit to talk to us at the end? Yeah, like, I feel like this game had a lot of great ideas, but it didn't get utilized properly. I, I almost think that the game did get rushed. To release. Same with Soul Blazer, although I think Soul Blazer was pretty much as is. I feel like this game could have used either a little bit more polish or something, like maybe one extra dungeon or something like that, just to kind of space out the use of like Free Dan and some of that before we got to Shadow or something like that. I don't know. But overall, I still, despite all the bugs and issues, well, actually, this game doesn't really have much in the way of bugs, but despite my story issues with the game, oh man, the Jackal. Oh jeez, what happened with you, man? That still that still messes me up to this day. But either way, uh, especially what happened with Hamlet, that was that was messed up too. But overall, I hope you enjoyed my playthrough uh, of Illusion of Guy. It was a it was a, a treat for me. I know I did short episodes, but I this was this is a palate cleanser game because I needed something to really just like cleanse me of like just kind of like ooh summer. I need something to to take my way from the heat and whatever's going on in the world. And I hope I and hope you did too by enjoying this game. And I hope this brought a memory. Or if you've never played this big game before, hopefully you take a chance to look at it and play for yourself. 
yeah, thank you for playing. Thank you for watching. And I enjoyed playing this. And the next time we deal with Quintet, we'll be in Terranigma. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next game. Class is over. Please be careful. Crossing the street. We have had a lot of traffic accidents lately. It's a million summer days, folks!